Hello and welcome to Project Titan. In this video, I'm going to talk more about this project, I'm going to show you what it is, and also some of the process and background on creating this project. What you're currently seeing here is the result of this project. So we have built this nice environment built in Unreal 5 with Houdini. So we used a bunch of Houdini tools with Houdini Engine to build with a smaller team this awesome environment. Now, what is Project Titan now exactly? So first of all, this is a learning demo. So in the next coming weeks and months, you will see more and more tutorials about this and other learning content. So we definitely want to share how certain tools are made or other decisions that we made. So we want to talk about that. And we also want to show our procedural workflows. This is of course mainly focused around Houdini. So how can Houdini be used to build up the environments faster with a lot of different tools? During this making of this project, we also worked with a variety of artists. So this was not an internal project by side effects, but we also worked together with a variety of artists, freelancers to help build this scene. Some of these artists were not even familiar with Houdini and managed to use the tools to build the scene faster. So as you can see, this is our result that we have. We have this nice image here, and this was built in around two months of time. So let's take a step back and talk first about the tools that are built for this project. The tools of the Project Titan. So we built a variety of tools. This can go, as you could see here, from a scrub tool to make some foliage, uh, to also the cable tool that can be used to simulate inside of the game engine, uh, to, for example, stacking tool to stack different objects on boats or on other places in the scene, and of course, the building tool. Now, these are some of the tools that we have. We have in total around 19 different tools. This can go from building tool, cable tool, platform tool, fences, cloth, pipes, to the tree tools, to stairs, train, and so on. So we have a variety of different tools that we could use. So the artist would pick the tool that they would need for that certain task to do, and then they would be able to do that faster. So not every tool is a big tool. Uh, for example, the cloth tool is something that's a bit smaller, that is even made in like a day. So some tools are built in like a few days or a few days, other tools definitely took more time. Like the building tool had a couple iterations and variations over its lifetime. So when we look back now at our scene, let's actually talk a bit about the tools a bit more. So for example, the buildings, so everything that's part of a building is made by this tool. So you could see that this uses a variety of different uh, models. And later on, you will actually see uh, the iteration that the building tool brings with it. Uh, we also have the cable tool. So we only have cables hanging in the air, but also on the ground. So all the cables you see in this scene are coming from tools. This also, again, allows us for iteration to quickly say the starting and beginning point of the cable and tweak that. Uh, the fences that we have in the scene, again, these are from curves. So we draw a curve and the fence will be there. Uh, the platforming tool, so all the platforms you see are built by a tool and then on top of that of course you do for example some cables to make it a bit more interesting so you can keep using tools with each other then on the back there we have construction tools so every time we want to have a specific construction type of asset or supporting assets for buildings uh, we could use construction tool to make it a bit more interesting uh, then all the pipes in the scene are done by tools so either the pipe tool could work on uh, curves or it could just work on boxes. So you could just place a box and say, here, I want a, a bunch of pipes and it will do that. Then all the way at the top right, we have the ivy. So in this case, it's, it's used to sort of frame the image, uh, but you could also use it uh, in the back and on, and on buildings and on pipes and so on. Then we have the tree tool there. So we have a couple of trees in the scene. Uh, also the scrub tool. So we have a couple of scrubs there as well. Uh, then the scaffolding tool, this was also useful to make some cool details along buildings. It was really great for that. Uh, then the electric wires, which automatically could connect, uh, for example, the lanterns uh, with the buildings, so it automatically could connect that. Some cloth tool all the way at the right bottom, which you could simulate inside of the, the game engine here. There are some other cases where the cloth tool has been used. Uh, and then the ad board, uh, so all the ads you see are done by a tool. So these are a handful uh, of tools you displayed a bit more on the scene. Uh, so you could see that even if you would have like two or three tools, like let's say I have a building tool, a cable tool, and a pipe tool, with those three tools, I can do already so much of this scene uh, just by having a few tools. And that's definitely something that you need to think about 
is already a few tools can benefit so much to your project. As I mentioned before, and I showed you the list, there are actually more tools in this scene. So there were 19 tools. So there are some tools that I did not directly show here. Like for example, the characters have some tool background. There are some stairs, lamps, and so on. So there are a couple of other tools uh, here as well. Then let's actually talk about the scene creation. So these were some of the tools used, but how was the scene actually created? So before we actually started creating the scene, some of the things that we already had was, I would say, research on tools. So we already had a bunch of tools in place. We already had uh, the level blockout, and we also had some concepting art. So this was already been made to actually speed up the actual creation of the environment art. So when we look at the first or early concept stage, we had Mike making a concept. So back then, this was at the beginning of 2021. We had some ideas and a rough story of what we could do with this project. So based on that theme and story, uh, we had some first concept art. So we could see here this character laying down. Uh, we had also the idea of that you could uh, walk a bit around in the city, which we then actually make a part of that. Uh, and you can also maybe have like a different version of the city. So overall here, our idea was to have this Amsterdam futuristic version of it. Uh, where also robots play a huge part uh, in society. So that was our uh, overall ID back then. So uh, then a couple of months later, we then decided to create also a block out. This was made by Chase. Uh, so he made this block out of a, what could be a level. Uh, but then for our first visual target, or we wanted to decide what should we work out. So we picked like an area, we called it the market back then. And we decided to like, what if we actually polish this up uh, and, and how it would look into final product. So with that area in mind, uh, we then had some more concept art being created on that. So we had Lino creating a couple sketches of this. So you could see that this area is a bit more sketched out. Uh, some of the more structures, a bit more defined. And this was just helpful for the environment artists who then came on board and could uh, look at these sketches and recreate that world and also some uh, robot designs uh, where we have, for example, the boat and the pizza bot actually in the scene. Uh, so that was really useful to have. Then from tool perspective, some of the tools we had already early on before actually making the scene. So I had a rough prototype of the building. So this was already working inside of Unreal. Uh, when we actually made it into, into the project, it of course had a few changes and iterations. Uh, like this one doesn't have a, uh, like a roof system and so on. So this was like a first test. Uh, also the cable tool, I already had that in place, I already did some testing with that. Here's an example of the script tool. Then we have, for example, the block out. So I actually took a part of the block out that we had and tried to make one single tool that could generate uh, the buildings and place props and so on. But again, I stepped away a bit of doing everything in one tool and, and created multiple tools. But that was like something that I tried. Uh, also the pipe tools. Uh, so you can see we have multiple layers of piping structures and things like that. So we already had tools in place. They were not maybe final, final, but we already had tools in place to start working on that. So then we actually started working on the scene. Uh, so we had two months of time that we planned in for this creation of the scene uh, with three artists. So we have one artist full time working on the scene, which is Robert. And we have two artists, Leah and Max, who would be working part-time or a couple hours a week during those two months. So Robert took sort of main responsibility of making the scene and also using most of the tools in the scene. So let's look at that progress. Uh, so here we have the first stage, which is of course the blockout stage. So you can see that we defined the, some of the buildings and the tower, things like that. So first stage of making that scene. And after a few days, we already integrated a couple of tools. So here are, for example, the pipe and the cables integrated. So you can see that this already benefits to the project and also to some of the first structures of the scene. Then also came another pass. So some of the cables and, and the pipes have changed, but also now the buildings are now included. Uh, so each single box is now actually a building. Uh, and this, of course, got more and more improved over the next couple of days here. Uh, so most screenshots that I show you are actually like a few days or maximum a week in between uh, each uh, sh screenshot. Also here at the bottom, we have also the platforming tool. So all the wooden platforms built by a tool. Um, and as you can see, a bit more polish on that. So the buildings changed a bit, some other elements, 
were tweaked and so on. Uh, and you can see here again, some more tweaks, like the main building here is now a tower uh, and then buildings and also the buildings got changed. Now, if you actually take a closer look at the buildings here on the right, and if I go back to some of the earliest sh shots, uh, you can basically see that each time I go back, the buildings change. And this is important to know is that there is a quite flexibility and iteration here. So even though these screenshots are only like a few days or a few weeks apart from each other, uh, you can see that this allows us for quickly adding and making changes. Like if you don't like how certain buildings look, like you could see here, like these buildings look way different than suddenly like a few days later. So based on the tools, we could just plug in new models and play around with newer models or update our models and so on. So we have a lot of iteration cap capacity. Now, for example, here, the train came in, some other changes, of course, made. Uh, you can see that there are more cables and, and things going on in the front here. Uh, also, the ad boards are now more included. So you could see that there are way more ad boards here. Um, then the artist went a bit more crazy with that since they had the tool to generate multiple ads. So they just placed a lot of them. Then it's sort of trying to balance a bit more the, the colors of the ad boards and also some more changes here. So at this stage, we are at the later weeks of the project. Uh, and these are more like fine tuning. Uh, and we also think about the composition, changed that a bit, also changed up the ad board, changed up the pipes, some of the cables got reworked. So you could see sometimes that the cables would look differently or something look differently. And thanks to the tools, it's like quickly uh, being changed up. Uh, so that's basically how we got to the final stages of the scene. So you could see that the last screenshots were more polishing up and trying to define a bit more of about how the scene could look. But very interesting was the beginning stage where we could quickly do iterations. Uh, so if we felt certain buildings were not fitting or certain buildings were maybe too much in the view, we could just simply move them quickly around with the tools. Also being helpful is having some structure and planning. So when we started the scene, Robert was sort of like working full time and took the responsibility of the scene and also started out planning out the scene. So you can see that he gathered some of the references, some of the concept art, some of the tools we had. So he had a good overall idea of what was already there in the project. I started to expand on that to have a clear mind on how to move forward. So if I would put this in a timeline, so the whole creation of this project. So we have early 2021 uh, was mainly creating the idea and trying to define what direction we want to go in. In mid 2021, we did some more research on what are the tools we want to show, like for example, the building tool, cable tool, things like other tools, uh, working together with a couple of freelancers to make tools. And then we have late 2021, where actually we created the scene. So a lot of the work uh, was actually done on the later stages where we actually created the scene, more and more of the tools got polished and defined in that stage, of course. It's good to know here that we also did not fully work the whole 2021 year uh, specifically on this project. For example, me also did some other learning content and tutorials during that time. Uh, so, but most of the work was done in the later stages when we actually came to making the scene and polishing up tools. And lastly here, again, I want to thank everyone who helped us on this scene. So we had a couple of new artists, concept artists, other artists helped us out on this. So thanks everyone here to contributing to this project. And that was it for this video. So thank you for watching. And if you want to see something more specific about tools or tutorials, leave a comment below.